Brad Stevens, Wick Grosbeck come out, defend the organization for how they handle the Ime Udoka suspension. And I am not here for the excuses for bad behavior that people keep trying to hide behind. I am sick of it. And I'm going to talk about it right now on the Lockdown Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can't. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team, step back. We gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Primetime, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finished. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. B. Hey, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network where it is your team every day. And I am here for you every day, Monday through Friday with a fresh free podcast. So subscribe wherever you get your podcast. You can watch the show on YouTube. This is Monday. We're heading into media day. By the time you're listening to this, I will be asking the Celtics and new interim head coach Joe Mazzulla all sorts of questions. All of us in the media will be there. So... The tomorrow show will be all about that. I'm John Corrales, former professional basketball player, credential beat writer, covering the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. Now heading into my 16th season covering the Celtics. I've also written a book called The Boston Celtics All-Time All-Stars. Ime Udoka might have been once, you know, in a certain timeline, an all-time all-star coach, but now he is on his way out. Let me bring Tom Westerholm in, Tom underscore NBA. Uh, we got to talk about it some more because the the last the last podcast was done before Brad Stevens with Grosbeck came out on Friday in a uh, hastily uh, assembled press conference, can we say? It was a very short notice press conference um, that they came out and uh, addressed what they could address. And so Let's start with that, Tom. I mean, it, the little bits that we got were the uh, timeline that once they found something out, they said they hired an independent uh, law firm to come in and investigate. They um, said that they, the Wick said the, the punishment was his final decision, but his conscience said that this was the right thing. And then Brad Stevens was visibly upset, I think, for a couple of reasons. One, he's pissed that his guy, his coaching hire, did this. I think he feels a little bit betrayed. And secondly, and more importantly, he had that very emotional kind of defense of all the women in the organization. A lot, a lot to get to. Let's just start with the basics first. I think, to me, the Celtics followed all of the protocols legally to protect themselves here. They did everything they needed to do. If you look at, oh God, something is coming because Ime did whatever he did. And those details are still kind of floating out there and still have yet to fully coalesce. It seems like the Celtics said, okay, we know, we know we're about to get sued by this person. The, we know we're gonna about to get all of this stuff, so we got to follow all. We got to check all of these boxes. And number one, hire an independent person to come in, do all of that, and and use their recommendations as punishment to get rid of the offending party. That's like step one, like out of the legal playbook. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think, yeah, you know, frankly, the way that the Celtics dealt with this. Um, I know they they took a lot of criticism, and we talked about this last on the last pod a little bit too. They took a lot of criticism for the way they dealt with it, and I, the the further we get into this, the less I think a lot of that criticism was warranted. Because yeah, I mean, you look at the way I mean, like, you know, the people people like to like to talk about how the Celtics kind of left their you know the women on their staff out to dry, and I I still maintain that I don't think that was the Celtics. I think that was the people doing the posting of the women, um, you know. Like, if you're the Celtics and this is all breaking and this is all coming out, like, you really have to be careful. You really have to protect yourself. Like, you can't be putting out, like, hastily prepared statements. Like, you you have to be careful. And and the Celtics were careful and they they did a lot of diligence. You know, I think they, they talked about how 
they've known about this for a little while. They've been investigating it for a little while. I mean, frankly, it's kind of a miracle given, you know, kind of the timeline that Wick and Brad laid out. It's kind of a miracle that this stayed under wraps as long as it did, frankly. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, you know, I guess the, my overarching takeaway from that press conference was, you know, I thought, I thought Brad handled it pretty well. Um, Like, you know, as far as, as far as you can handle a, a situation like this, I thought, you know, he was, he, he, you know, he, he, he hit all the right notes. I mean, there's only so, you know, th- there's only so much you can do. There's only so much, it. yeah. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, I think he said the things that needed to be said. Um, I think the, the one kind of thing that was unintentionally a little funny was how Whit Grossbeck kept, you know, people would ask him something and he'd be like, I'm not going to talk about that. And then he would immediately talk about it, which was yeah, kind of yeah. <laughs> Somebody, somebody asked yes. him, like, you guys said violations. Was that intentional? And it's like, well, I'm not going to talk about anything with the investigation. But, yes, it was intentional that we said violations. It was – Yeah, <laughs> yeah right, right, right. Um, but yeah. Overall, you know, I mean, I think, look, this <laughs> – for this franchise, this has been a really, really hard week. Um, I thought getting a press conference together as quickly as they did, getting a press conference together on Friday before media day, really smart because – there's going to be a ton of questions about this at media day, certainly, but at least it wasn't the full brunt of just like, you know, the, the, that, that in, it kind of like curbs the initial wave of yeah, questions. Yeah. Like now, you know, I mean, there will be more, there'll be a lot more, but at least some of the basics and some of the, um, you know, some, some of the ground rules for the questions that, that can be asked like that. These things have all been established now, which I think was really right. Smart going into Monday. I think, I think what they did was they took the pressure off of Joe Missoula which yeah. they need to do it's as much of that as possible. Yeah. You know, and they took pressure off the players because, because now I, well, here's what I expect. I expect to go in there on Monday uh, at noon and have ask. I'll ask other reporters will ask various versions of Ime Udoka related questions. And I think a lot, as often as they can, they will say, that's a front office issue. We're here to play basketball. And then that's it. it but at the same time, they're going to have to answer some questions because we're sitting here and say, look, it is your head coach and this affects you on the floor. And you do have to answer the question of, well, how do you pivot from walking into a season and, you know, walking onto the floor and having Wick Grosbeck and Brad Stevens come up to you and be like, okay, here's what's going on with Ime. Joe Mazzulla is your new coach. Like, There's got to be a, a gut punch in there somewhere. Because as I've been saying, these guys worked. First of all, they vouched for Ime to get here. And, well, one of the, and, and this ties into one of the questions that Brad Stevens was asked was, did you do your due diligence on Ime? And there's no... Clearly, there was no history of anything like this, or, or didn't seem to be any history of anything like this. So I don't know why whatever happened happened now. That's a whole. That's a different podcast. Um, we'll let TMZ do that podcast. I was going to say one that we are not qualified to do. <laughs> we're we're just not going to do it. Um, but they vouched for him. They played for him. They bought into the 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 system. They went to the finals. There's there's a connection there. Yeah. And for all of these guys, there's this feeling, just like we had the feeling on the outside. Ooh, we, we might have something special here. We might have something special that lasts for a long time. And it's just like any other relationship. When you feel like you've met the one, to have that ripped away from you suddenly, you're like, oh my God, what? There's 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 a shock to it all. So they're going to have to answer some level of basketball questions that are related to Ime, but I guarantee the the playbook is going to be deflect, deflect, deflect as much as possible. Put it on the front office. They've already talked. We don't know anything else. We're just talking about basketball. On a weird level, you, you can almost relate to the players as as media people, right? Because like obviously they had like a real relationship with Ime, right? Where they were they really, you know thought yeah. they knew him and they really like worked with him and stuff. But like in the media, it's kind of the same way, right? Because we kind of follow the same, um, the, the same pattern of like, okay, now we've watched this guy be a great coach. So now we're going to write about what a great coach he is. And, and, you know, mm-hmm. there's going to be all this glowing stuff. And, and it was all, it was all earned right in the same way 
that the Celtics relationship with Ime was all earned. Like this is all like it, it, it all happened organically. Like nobody was trying to, nobody was really trying to pump Ime up. We were, you know, just kind of writing about what happened. And what happened was he took the team to the finals in his first year as a coach. He broke them through that ceiling that they just yeah. could not seem to break through with Brad. So it's, it, that's why I think it's such a shock to, to, to us too. You know, I mean, certainly more so for the players. I'm like, I'm not trying to equate right, right. us, our right. experience to the players experience, but I, it, it's been such a shock for, for those of us who, who wrote about Ime all year and who and who marveled over the way that that this Celtics team, you know, like bounced back from that awful first half of the, or you know that very mediocre first half of the season and, and became this absolute juggernaut in the way that he seems to inspire Jalen and Jason and just like all the different things that went into Ime's super successful first season and you know like you were saying like just a uh, you know seemed like a coach who was destined for stardom it seemed like a guy who was mm. on his way up and. And you, for us, it's like, well, now we have to pivot all the way around and be like, yeah. this guy's made some really dumb, bad, potentially like, you know, potentially way worse than dumb mistakes. You know, yeah, stuff yeah, like, yeah. Like, because we still technically don't know, you know, how the extent of this and how bad this is. Like, you know, you almost you almost hesitate to to put caps on it because you just don't we don't know what the situation is. So I don't know, man, I, you, you can kind of relate to the players and just kind of feel um a, a a small fraction of, of what they're feeling just you know fans sure cheered, right fans cheered for Ime and made jokes about about you know like like kind of loving jokes about Ime that now yeah they don't hold yeah up very well. like this it's a mess right 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 i mean look i i'm 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 still as as this it came out what thursday night and we're recording this sunday night so i've had a few days to process this and I am still in complete shock, complete shock that this guy really risked it all for and for what? I like let's let, let me take a second here because I, I do have to get into uh, I got to get this before uh, I get into my whole shock over email and, and other more important things. Bet online is your number one source for all your betting needs this season. NFL. We are in what week three now. Uh, Matt Jones got hurt, so if you're a Patriots fan, it's not great. Uh, so hey, that's going to change how people bet on the Patriots, or maybe not. Maybe people are just always betting against the Patriots. Either way, Bet Online is your number one source for football betting. You can find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, in-depth articles, and analysis on every game you can find. As always. Bet Online remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. It's including Major League Baseball, uh, which is about to wrap up its regular season and head into the playoffs. MMA, boxing, golf, everything is right there at betonline.net, the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events. So head on over to betonline.net. You can use your mobile device to do so and learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. Please gamble responsibly. Thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Make Locked On NBA your second listen every day. I host on Wednesdays with Jake Madison. We're also, I'm also on the show today, this Monday show, talking about Ime Udoka. Monday is a, a quick whip around the league with the three biggest stories. And unfortunately, the Celtics can remain that. So check it out, Locked On NBA, wherever you get your podcast, wherever you found Locked On Celtics. It's also on YouTube. Uh, I am just in, still in disbelief that this guy who busted his ass and was one of the hardest workers in the league trying to just trying to hang on and he knows how tough it is to stick in the NBA. Then he goes to the coaching side and he you know is on Pop's bench and he, he makes his jump to Philly and, and Brooklyn to try and spread his wings a little bit. It works. He lands this prestige job in Boston. And then, and then like, I don't know how soon after he was in Boston that this started, but clearly something extended was happening. And if they found, if the timeline is correct and they found out sometime in July that yeah. something was going on, then that means it was probably going on at some point during the course of the regular season. So this dude in his first season decided that he was going to get involved in all of this 
And whatever he did, again, we don't know what he did, but it has to be bad. Tom, everybody's sharing the Matt Barnes video. Matt Barnes comes out in defense of Ime Udoka and then says, oh, I got a call telling me what actually happened. And I deleted that. Matt Barnes is it like, as my friend Ken, he texted me, he said, if Matt Barnes is, is like taking things back and saying, whoa, that was messed up, you know it had to be bad. And the stuff that's floating around there, the stuff that you're seeing on the TMZs and all this other stuff that I'm not going to give the, the dignity of, of addressing, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. It has to be. And, and like, here's a dude that had the whole basketball world in his hands. I just, I can't, I cannot believe that this is how this is going. It's, it, I mean, it, it, it's, I don't know, flabbergasting. Is that, a, is that a word that you use in 2022? I don't know. Um, you know, I, I, I hope he won't mind me sharing this, but the riffs, man, I was, I was texting with him and he, you know, he pointed out to me that, um, you know, this is so, sometimes, you know, like when, when like fame happens very quickly, like he may be mm-hmm. a super duper star very quickly. And we all know that like all of these people see every tweet that's about them. Like if you're tweeting about a player, just mm-hmm. know that they saw it, right? Like we yeah, talked yeah, about yeah. that before they have seen it. They're all searching their names. I'm sure that goes for the coaches too. I, I have no doubt in my mind that that goes for the coaches. Maybe not Brad. I don't know about Brad, but um, <laughs> <laughs> like, I think Brad might, might, just, might just be mentally healthy enough to uh, not be on. Maybe, but, maybe. Um, but look, I mean, Ime saw all of, I'm sure Ime saw all of it. Sure, all sure, of the plays, sure. All of the love, all of the, oh my gosh, Ime is awesome. Ime is this, Ime is that. And I mean, look, like, I don't know. I've never been in that position where I've led a team to the NBA finals in my first year as a head coach. We lost in the Eastern conference finals and it hurt, but um, you know, like I, I think he may like, I think it's possible that, that maybe this just like, maybe it happened very quickly. I don't know because I keep coming back to like what you mentioned before. Brad talked about how he'd done his due diligence. Like he'd done research. Yeah. Yoka, like, and, you know, around the league, all you ever heard were good things about Ime Udoka. And it's like, I don't know, man, maybe maybe stuff happened really fast. I, I don't actually have, like, much of a good explanation beyond that because I'm I'm with you. You know, like, this this guy was – was. we talked last time about how the Celtics don't fire you – know, like, they don't like to fire head coaches. Like, they like to build. Yeah, And yeah. the first building block here was one – like, I mean, it was the strongest foundation of any – head coach that the team has had in how many years like yeah have they ever yeah. had a stronger foundational building block for a head coach than that like i mean this man was you gotta go back to bill russell <laughs> right. <laughs> you know <laughs> right and like and, and like that's how far back we're going like this is you know yeah i, I mean i i don't know man i i think it, it, it's it, it is staggering right like that like the 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 kind of career that he may had, had just established for himself that he was, that he was about to, to walk down. And, um, you know, he was, he was going to be like a Bostonian for a, a very long time. Right. Technically uh, that's still possible, I guess, but I think we both agree uh, that that seems very, very unlikely to ever materialize. At this you, point. you know, the, when I, when I first talk about like, okay, you know, they're spending him and, as you as you start to think about things and you have conversations about things, um, and you start to realize, okay, they suspended him, but legally, that's probably like the first step. Like the, what they're doing is they're setting themselves up to set up the termination. You can't just terminate right away. You've got to go right. through certain steps. So, like, I think I think that there's a a legal playbook that's being followed here and that any assumption that he may, I mean, there, there is technically a a universe where he does return, but I think any legitimate assumption at this point, having looked at it deeper, I think, I think he's done and it's, it's going to take a while. You know, he's going to have to disappear for a while and he's, I'm sure, I'm sure he will still get some amount of money. He'll get some level of his contract that is, is guaranteed. Um, there, if they fire him, they owe him everything. 
And yeah. another element of the press conference was there the suspension carries with it a significant financial penalty, as Rick Grosbeck said it. And the way he said it is when you net it all out, it makes it feel like he's suspended without pay, even though he wouldn't answer that question directly. Yeah. So, but he'll Certainly get he'll get some money. Certainly without some pay. Like he's not getting his regular paychecks. Um he he's probably gonna get terminated. He's probably gonna get some money. And he better make that money last, buddy, because that money is going to have to carry you through a long, long way because he's not going to get hired. He is not going to be working in in any NBA capacity in, in any short order. He's got to go through a whole image rehab and all of that stuff. Like he's got to do his interview with Oprah. He's going to do the whole thing to, to just like beg back into a second chance. And, and maybe he'll get it because everybody always seems to. And, but I, I don't know, again, I don't know the depth of it. I don't know the depth of what happened, but everybody that seems to have some level of knowledge of it is like, whoa, whoa, this is like, as Matt Barnes put it, it's a hundred times worse than he would have expected. So I have to take seriously that he, he threw all of this away and did it in a, in a, in a, I don't know a vile way, somehow, some level of, you know, he, he did something that was so bad that the people who find out go, Ooh, okay. never mind. You know, like, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's just, it's mind boggling to me. How do you work to get there? I got it. I've got it in my hands and then pfft, it's gone. Bye-bye. Potential hall of fame career, potential, all of that stuff by for what? Anyway, no, uh, I, I agree with you. And, and I'll just note too, that I thought a lot of that was like, if you listened to the way that we, we talked about how Brad got very emotional over, over, you know, kind of the, the women in the organization who yes. had to do with a lot. And I mean, we heard Brad curse in a press conference for what I think was the first time. Um, yes. You know, I, I think, and I don't, I honestly, I, I don't mean to say that to be flippant like brad legitimately thought that it was rampant bs and like you know I, I credit to him yeah um if you if you listen to the way that wick and, and brad talked i mean they sounded legitimately like like livid at Eme. like there was no mm-hmm. question of like oh that there was no like he made a mistake blah 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 there was none of that it was There's like none of that i mean and there were there were opportunities that they could have taken to go that route and they just did no, <laughs> like they had no can intention I, of doing that. Can I add to that? Yeah, I also haven't seen because players have a lot of power, and yeah. they have their social media. I've not seen a single player come out and say anything, not even a vague passing thing. No player has taken a punishment of another black, uh, a black man committing some crime somewhere. In you know, and 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 was unjustly punished. Punishment didn't fit the crime, and say black men get punished more harshly in the United States. Like like no one even took that opportunity to do something vague, and that could be applied to Ime. Radio silence from everyone. The players, obviously, the organization. Anybody with an opportunity, anybody with knowledge of what happened everybody's been silent. I think the players not saying anything, not even hinting at it is telling to me. Yeah. And I mean, I, I think I'm sure some of that too, is the organization saying like, we could be liable for things like let sure like, do, not, do not say anything because like there's a legal process that's playing out here. Like don't, don't say what, I mean, that, that, that could be it too. Right. But you know, yeah, I mean, to your point, I mean, no, like, there, there's no, like, jokey joke, like, emojis or anything like that. No, like, eye emojis, nothing like that. Like, the, whatever happened here right. was entirely too serious for jokey joke, you know, eye emojis. That's, nobody's, nobody's doing that. Nobody's, you know, being that, That's the whole thing. being flippant about this at all. And to your point, the, the, the time that, like, everybody, everybody in Wick and Brad, Super, super serious. Um, never saying he made a mistake, like you said, and he's going to get, you know, he's got to pay the price. None of that. No one. So just piecing things together, there's, it's very clear that 
Ime did something. And the stuff that we're seeing, even the the the, the stuff that we're seeing now is, is nowhere close to the final detail. Which brings me to what Brad said. And this, this notion that's been floating around that I feel like I, I need to address. Brad Stevens was very emotional in saying the they have a lot of talented women in that organization. And the fact that so many of them were dragged into this on Twitter through that rampant BS. Uh, he like that. He, he basically said that, that that's what hurts maybe the most um, because I do think the Celtics have done a good job in being inclusive. I think they did have done a pretty good job. They could do better, but I think they've done a pretty good job with their hiring practices. They've included a lot of women. They, I think they're, it's, it's a pretty diverse uh, mix and to, to have this come out and, and for people to act the way they did, I, I, I can see, and I, I'm, I'm with Brad on how like upsetting that is um, certainly Brad, because he's closer to these people, but th- this whole notion that, well, the Celtics left these women out there or anything like that, or that the reporting, it, it's the fact that it was vague reporting. That's why all this stuff happened. Like, no, 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 no. There's not a single excuse for anything that happened other than the people who did it were dicks. And that's it. That is the end of the story for me. Stop trying to blame other people for Twitter users, social media users, dragging unrelated, uninvolved people into this. It's not It's not Brad's fault. It's not Adrian Wojnarowski's fault that people, oh, well, I just wanted to know who it was and I just put some random person's picture out there. Don't do that. Stop being a jerk on social media. Like that is a complete lack of personal responsibility. And if you're pushing off that personal responsibility and blaming somebody else, you're just making this worse. You did something horrible. It's your fault, not somebody else's fault. It's not somebody else. No one else made you do that. You did that. Take responsibility. There are very clear this, I think in more so than many other situations, I feel like there are very clear lines of, of delineation where it's like, okay, the people who did something, the, 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 the bad actors here, right. Were were Ina yep. Yudoka, it seems. Yes. I mean, you know, again, I, I mean, like, from what we can gather from, from what Matt Barnes said or whatever, you know, it seems like it was Ime Udoka and the, the people who posted the photos of the women in the Celtics organization. Like, yeah. beyond that, it's like, I mean, you can, you can start to get into, like, this person's fault for this, this person's fault for that. And, I mean, you can twist yourself into a pretzel doing all of that stuff. I mean, I, I saw, you know, a bunch of stuff about how – and I mean – I have some sympathy for the argument about like, you know, like the vague reporting and, and all of that. I, I, but then, you know, like we were talking about before we got on and you, you kind of talked me out of that sympathy for it, because honestly um, I thought you made a very strong point that it's like, look, this is, this is their job. They knew that email was going to get suspended. What are they supposed to do? Sit right. on that scoop? Like, right. Okay. Adrian Wojnarowski found out through a reliable source because I know what it takes. I know what it takes to, to get a report. Like when you report something, you're not just being like, oh, some dude, you know, Celtics dude 06253 DM'd me. It's he knows who told him that. You're an NBA reporter. You cover the league. And one of the NBA finalists yeah. is about to suspend their head coach for violating team rules, potentially significantly, a potential significant suspension. What is he supposed to do? Yes, I'm going to report that. You report that. Just like you report, sources tell me the Celtics have traded for or, or Malcolm Brogdon. Yes. You, you find out news about the – and so, okay, is it vague at first? Yeah, it's vague at first because he found something out and he tweeted what he can and he's going to work on finding the rest. But in this news, and you know, it's the same people who – on trade uh, or free agency day are keeping the Woj and Shams tracker who are like, Oh, Oh, Shams, Shams got Woj three, three times in a row. Woj is slipping. And you know, you make it a competition between these guys. And then 
when one of them says, yeah, I've got a scoop. I'm going to report it. You go, oh, whoa, how are you reporting this vague stuff? You can't have it both ways. So, yeah, I mean, there's he didn't he didn't put out the reason. Eventually, the reason came out. Shams tweeted out the reason. And but that's still no, just slipping. Just kidding. Yeah, right. But that's still just because you don't know the details doesn't give you the right to drag human beings through the mud in your pursuit of the details like that's that doesn't that's not how this works you don't have the right to go out there and put this woman's picture out there or that woman's picture out there and say oh is this the one like, no no that's that's a really horrible thing to do so just because Woj didn't give you all the details doesn't mean you have the right to do that right well and and not for nothing uh because you brought this up Woj said ESPN sources like the the, the multiple sources kind of like violations that's intentional like he right you know this wasn't like it, obviously he was proven correct but also that's worth noting because it wasn't from a source like you know this wasn't just one person coming to him like clearly he you know, right knew quite a bit and I mean regardless I, I think the larger point here being like the like, a lot of blame flying flying around right where it's like you know like Celtics organization right. flying around you know blah 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 and it's just like listen <laughs> Ime Udoka it sounds like acted very badly and mm -hmm. if if you posted a photo of a woman in the Celtics organization and speculated that that might have been the woman you know that he had the affair with then you acted very badly if you did that that's bad don't do that you that's know right. I'm like I'm not your mom. I'm just trying to, you know, like, just don't do that. It, it's but just, right. Like, right. Right. It's a bad like, thing to do. It's you're putting, just you're putting a do. person in a bad situation. Like, yeah. Right. Because, because now what's going to happen is people are going to go to these games and they're going to see this person. And yeah. Twitter is sporadic, right? You see a thing and you go, oh, okay. This, and you don't read everything. Like you, I read basically everything yeah. and so we can differentiate and we can we can filter out okay that doesn't sound right this doesn't sound right but the average person who saw that picture probably hasn't seen much of an update and still has this vision and the and, and one other very important thing is just how the human brain works once you get that first thing in that that gets that's the image that's what's burned into your brain yes that's this is the the playbook of the gaslighter this is the playbook of the you know those who are trying to spread the lies the the whole playbook the first rule is be first be the first one with the like because once you say this is the person now you have to prove that that's not the person to the people who've seen it so that is an extraordinarily powerful thing to get over and it's hard and a lot of these women are going to be at these games because their job is to be on the sidelines near the sidelines walking through the court being surrounded by fans how many of these fans are going to say something and be assholes to them sorry i'm not supposed to swear on this but i that's nothing else i can i can call these people how many people are going to say something to these women? Do you think that you think now that this has come out that these women are all safe and fine? Like, oh, oh, it came out that it wasn't her. Okay, never mind. No, because people still believe it was whoever it was that the picture was, and, and, and they're going to get comments. And even if they don't believe that, that woman still has been given notoriety over something that had nothing to do with it. Right. right? Like, it, like she will still be known for being, even if, it, even if it's, she's known for being the person that wasn't involved, that's still I, like, not for nothing. For one thing, it should be very clear that this shouldn't happen to anyone, regardless of your resume. But like, think about how unfair that is to like, like if you're a woman working in some of these, but like, these are very high profile positions you right. worked very hard to get to this point and now the thing that some some of these women are going to be known for is like oh like or at least at least for a while right. you know is like oh this is the person who was involved in this or at best 
this is the person who it came out she wasn't involved in this. Right. That's, that's right. terrible. That shouldn't, we, that shouldn't happen. Women, women, the, the, it's hard, yeah, it's hard to break into, it's hard to break into the NBA for anybody. Yeah. It's harder to break into the NBA for women. And even though there's, there's this push, you've, you have to prove, and we've had, we, I've had women on the podcast that have said similar things. You, you have to prove things that guys don't as a woman. And so you, it's harder. It's just harder to achieve some of these levels because guys, a lot of, a lot of people who are, uh, Neanderthals out there will always believe the worst when it comes to women and they will always discredit. I tweeted out that teams will regret not hiring Becky Hammond. You know, she wins, she wins her uh, championship in the WNBA right away. I said, Oh, some of these teams might regret not hiring her. And I get backlash. I get backlash myself. Oh, name the team, name the team. Oh, the WNBA is so inferior. So it's easier to like get, get, Oh, no. You know, so that's, and that's me on Twitter talking about women. Imagine the women and all of the stuff that they get, how much more they have to prove all of that stuff. And, and like the instant you're tagged with this stink, it's hard to wash it off. It's harder to wash it off. And it's going to, it's going to take some of these women who weren't involved a long time to clear their names of doing nothing, which is insane. <laughs> I mean, it might get like, anyway. unfortunately, it might be harder for them to clear their names than it will be for, you know, Ime to get back into coaching because, you know, he's a very successful coach. Right. Like, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, look, it's, 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 it's really disgusting. And I, yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I don't, I don't have that much more to add to it. it I mean, yeah, no. Yeah. I, I, it's, I, I, it's not right. I know, I know what you're saying. <laughs> so, so like, it's 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 hard enough. It's hard enough to deal with this well, I story. Guess, and the other thing, one one more thing, I would add too, is just like part of the thing that makes it so hard for women in sports is that at like w like whenever I mean at like in my experience with like women who are reporters, very professional women, very professional, and it's always assumed that they're like hooking up with players or whatever it might be. Well, that's what I was kind of getting at before. Yeah, yeah exactly. It, it, that's like the assumption, and that's there. That's not it. Like that's. And, and right, it's so unfair to them that that ends up being the assumption. And then, you know, yeah, it, like like you said, I think that's part of what makes it stick is that everybody's like, see, I knew it. Yeah, right, right, right. That's that's exactly it. That's exactly it. And how many of those people are going to be patrolling the sidelines? How many of those people are going to be close? How many of those people are going to have a few drinks and have, feel like really, uh, really willing to say some things? Um, there, there's no doubt. There is no doubt in my mind that it's going to get. There are going to be some ugly moments at the arena. I hope. I hope to hell I'm wrong here, but I'm willing to bet that somebody's going to get kicked out. More than one person is going to get kicked out for making a comment and saying something to to some of these women. I, I just. That's how ugly this this is because there's still plenty of people who are going to sit there and say. I don't know what he may did wrong to get that year long suspension. I still think that it's, you know, like there's still gonna be people who say that, but the bottom line here, I think as we get to the, I think the natural end of the email discussion, because at this point, what's left, once he gets fired, he gets fired. Um, the, the, the rest of the details are going to just be either salacious or, you know, I don't know, worth mentioning, I guess, but not like at this point, it's just all part of the legal process. So I feel like we we've said what we need to say about email. And to me, the bottom line is I think the email, he may clearly did something. It's it, it, we're as a, as a former TV person and living in a world where everything we have to make sure we have the allegedly he allegedly did something no i think at this point it's pretty clear he did something he may apologize for it he essentially admitted to doing something in his statement because he said he let the team down he let his players down he accepts the punishment so he's not fighting the punishment all of this is an acceptance of i did something wrong he has 
basically we don't have to dance around this. Ime did something wrong and it's apparently so bad that the people, like I've said before, who initially were defending him, once they found out, they were like, nope, never mind. I, I'm out. And the, the team saw fit to suspend him for the year and begin this process. This is this is not something the team would do lightly. I think I think they like I think deep down they they were plan like they were obviously planning on Ime being the guy for a long time. Um but he did something and it's it's very bad. And whatever level of bad is, whatever that is, he he it, we'll we'll figure that out. But he's the guy who did something wrong. He's the guy. And he must have had opportunities to stop doing that thing wrong. And he didn't. Everybody else involved, the or or not involved, I think like the women are that's, that's just unfortunate. People who are, are dragging these women or or did and like said, oh. Well, I'm sorry, you know, like, eh, like, no, 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 not good enough. Um, and I think the team, I think the team handled it about as, as if you, if you look at it at face value, seems like they handled it fairly well. And that process of independent outside law firm, all of that feels like they did everything they're supposed to do. And this was, this was the, the determination. So that's yeah. it. That's it. He may, he may messed up and he's out. And yeah. you know, there, that's it. The, the women who were involved, no, no other punishment. That's the last bit. No one else got punished. So that tells you something too. After all of this, no one else got punished. Just the email. So. And again, seems noteworthy to me that the people who know or can credibly claim to know something about what happened. None of them are like, "Wow, it's unfair that the woman isn't getting public uh, punished." That's yeah. That's not yep. that's not the reaction from Matt Barnes. You know, like right. I, I don't, we're basing a lot on Matt Barnes saying he knows, but uh, you know, there was none. There was none of that. So yeah, no, it's uh, it it seems pretty clear where the uh, where the fault lies here. Yeah, it's just unfortunate, unfortunate. You know, and just from, you know, from a basketball perspective, the basketball perspective sucks too, because you thought you had something here. You really thought you had something, you know, yeah. you hired the guy and he came in, he did such a good job and, you know, strictly like, I'm not, this is mean saying this at the end for a reason, because I don't want to minimize anything but he, he looked like you had yourself the coach. You look like you had this guy locked up for a while and this was going to be the guy this was going to be your greg popovich this was going to be the guy yeah. you know and and it's just wow i can't believe you know good luck to joe missoula good luck and we'll be talking to joe on uh on monday again as people might be listening to this so lots more coming out as far as the encore stuff the encore stuff is now going to be the focus uh what Eme did i think we can we can put that to bed now and say what he did what he did that's it's all it's all legal stuff now now we're focused on what happened what's happening on the floor so that's deeply optimistic of you but i hope you're right <laughs> i'm hoping i mean at least for this podcast yes. like as far as as far as this podcast is concerned i've i've said everything i need to say i think when it comes to email obviously other as details come out maybe they'll warrant more comment but I've said everything I need to say, you know, uh, I've shared my disappointment in him. I've shared my disappointment in the people, uh, on social media. I think, uh, there's nothing more to say. We've done it. And now as far as I'm concerned, it's how does Joe Missoula handle this group? How do they move forward? And, you know, do they have the pride in themselves to say, Hey, we're going to win no matter what. If he has gone, if he didn't feel confident enough or didn't feel like it was important enough to preserve this, then we don't think it's important enough to care about him anymore. Like that, I don't know, as a player, that, that kind of would be my reaction. If you, this is my last thing. I'm, I'm talking a ton right now. I know 
But if I, if I'm sitting there as a player and I'm like, you, you yelled at me for, for making all of these little, you, you lit me up. You, you MF me up and down for making these mistakes. Meanwhile, you you're up we doing this. Like a-holes. You're the a-hole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, you're doing all this stuff and violating these rules. And if, if, and if it's true that he ever got any warning and disregarded the warning, then right. like, well, well, you're a hypocrite. The, the rules, rules apply to us, but they don't apply to you. And you so flout the rules to a point where you get yourself suspended and basically fired eventually like that, like, like, like screw you, man. Like you, I thought you cared about us. You didn't care about us. You cared about you. And like, I'm done with you. Like for me, I, I can see a player being like, I'm done with him because he messed this up and we have something special here. So he, he clearly didn't want to be a part of it because if he did, he wouldn't have done what he did. Yeah. I, I mean, I thought it was, I, I apologize to the person who tweeted this out because I thought it was a cool moment that, that I don't remember who tweeted it. But somebody pointed out that uh, uh, Marcus Smart was at the Post Malone concert in, in Boston yeah. and he came out on stage and apparently everybody just went nuts for Marcus Smart. And it was like, that's cool. You know, like after that's all awesome. of this, that must have felt nice for, for Marcus after all of sure. the stuff that's happened this week to just have that like, okay, like this is still, this is still, yeah, my, yeah. Team. This is still my, you know, my team. Like these are, I, I think, I do think that once they get out on the court together a little bit, once they get some of that normal, you know, normalcy back, like may, maybe things can, can go back a little bit. Maybe it can, they can kind of start to feel that like, yeah. okay, yeah, email situation messed up. But these are the guys that I've been playing with for a long time. I've grown as an NBA player here. There is a comfort level here that I can find again, even in the midst of all this kind of pandemonium. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, that's going to do it for the show. I'm going to wrap it up. So, because if I don't wrap it up, I'm gonna something else is gonna pop into my head. So, <laughs> I don't want that. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate you, man. I appreciate everybody here uh, checking out the show. Thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Hey, now make Locked On Fantasy Basketball your second listen. Josh Lloyd hosts the number one daily fantasy basketball show on the planet. It's free, available wherever you get your podcasts. Wherever you found Locked On Celtics, you can find Locked On Fantasy. If you found Locked On Celtics and you have not subscribed and you're still listening to the sound of my voice, hopefully that means you've enjoyed the show. You've gone through, I mean, this is like 50 minutes of podcasting well past what I'm supposed to be doing. Back to the half hour where, uh, as, as we move forward. It's just so much email stuff to talk about. But uh, subscribe, please. I would love it if you subscribe. I promise I'm going to be talking basketball from now on. And I'm I'm, I'm done with this whatever this was. So subscribe there. You can watch the show on YouTube. Uh, appreciate you doing that. Ring the bell. Make sure you get your uh, your subscribe and your, your notifications and all that. Whatever. You know what to do. Share the podcast. Tell your friends and family and everybody they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. Your team every day. <laughs>